Hello, hello, hello. This is Laura Gathers here with Love Harder Marriage Coaching, and I am so excited tonight. We are going to have some speakers on. Um, Reggie and Rachel Copeland, they are going to be speaking at the Love Harder Marriage Conference. And so I wanted you all to get a chance to meet them and a chance to ask them questions. We're just gonna do a quick little 10 to 15 minute interview. So go ahead and do me a favor and share this so that those who may be interested in attending the conference can hop on here and learn more about the Love Heart of Marriage Conference. Give me a second, let me invite them on. Let me see. Let me go ahead and get them up here. Give me one second. Do, do, do. Rachel, I don't see how I can invite you on. It's not giving me an option. I see that you're on here. I just can't see how to get you on here. It's not giving me the option to invite you. I am trying my best to get her on here. Let's see. Yeah. Rachel, can you request to join? If you can request to join, that might help. Thanks, Jessica. How are y'all doing tonight? I hope you all have had a wonderful day. It has been a very hot day here in Virginia. Hi, Debranetta. I hope you all had a wonderful day today. I'm just gonna wait. Give me a couple of seconds to try and see if Rachel can request to join. And if so, then we will get this show on the road. So let me tell you about the Love Heart of Marriage Conference while I'm waiting to see how we can move forward. It is October the 13th. Who's invited? Singles, engaged, married. It doesn't matter if you've been married for one year or 15 or 20 or 30. This is a conference where you can come and receive something. So I am really excited. We have some dynamic speakers. Um, you'll hear from two of them tonight, the Copelands, and they will be um, speaking on just how to maintain your marriage and, and how to endure through the seasons and have that longevity. They've been married for 20 plus years, so they have a lot of wisdom to share with us. And as soon as we can get them on here, we will get this interview or quick meet and greet going. But outside of them, we have some dynamic panelists. We're going to have a husband's huddle downstairs. And that is where husbands will go and receive from other men. And then there will be some joint sessions. But outside of that, we are going to have a wonderful time just exploring the Word of God and understanding what His plan is, what His purpose is, and what His power is when it as it pertains to our marriage. So I hope that you all will come on to Ashburn, Virginia. It, the conference will be at Capital Community Church. So come on to Ashburn, Virginia and check us out. Once again, it's October the 13th. All right. There we go. I think I can get... Hopefully, I seen her request. So hopefully, Facebook is going to work very smoothly for us. It says it's adding. So October the 13th here in Ashburn, Virginia, the conference is from 10 to 5, and the doors open at 9 am hi reggie hi rachel hello how are y'all doing 
Good, how are you? Good. I am doing good. Did y'all have a good day? Yes. That's good. So, Reggie and Rachel, can you just introduce yourselves? Tell everyone how long you've been married or anything in particular that they think you think they might be interested in. Okay. We've been married 21 years this past June, and we dated for seven years before then. So, wow. 28 years. I was... 16 when we first started dating and he was 18 almost 19 so wow yep and we have I four kids and we've been doing ministry together for a long long time <laughs> <laughs> so y'all were high school sweethearts well interesting fact we actually went to the same elementary school middle school and high school but he's wow. a little bit older than me so i didn't really know who he was until high school Mm -hmm. uh, he actually knew my older sister before he knew me. But um, so, yeah, high school sweethearts, but he's two years older. So by the time I was in high school, he was getting ready to get out of high school. Wow, that's a long time to be with somebody. Yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm. It sure is. <laughs> that is great. So I wanted you all to hop on here tonight so that the potential attendees and those who have already registered could get a chance to meet you possibly ask you some questions if they post any but to get this rolling i wanted to ask you could you give i'm going to ask you to give three sets of people your advice okay what advice would you give to a single person who is preparing for marriage that's the first one the second one is what advice would you give to a newlywed and the last one is, what advice would you give to someone who has been married for 15 plus years? Yeah. You want to go? All right. I'll start with the uh, with someone who is planning on getting married in the future. I think the toughest part, once you married, um, there's a couple of areas. Um, the advice I would give is to really have a, a conversation to get together and, and talk about your uh, future in terms of your financing finances um, that's a very difficult area in a marriage it doesn't matter if you have a little money or a lot of money um, it can be difficult so i would make sure um, before getting married i would really make sure that the couple they're on the same page in terms of your finances and the other one um, what are your goals for having a family uh, a family together um, very important topic Mm -hmm. it's it's one that you can't go into lightly and again it's another topic that the couple needs to be on the same page agreed mm -hmm. i definitely agree you, you have anything to add um couple what would i add to a couple that's getting ready to get married advice um i would say on top of that i would say to embrace your differences because I think when I was getting ready to get married, I thought, I mean, I, we were pretty young. I was 21, 22. 22. Wow. He was like 25. And I look at my 25-year-old now and think, he, he can't be married. <laughs> no way. He's not ready. But at 22, I thought I knew everything. Mm -hmm. And one of the things I thought I knew was that, you know, we're just going to mesh together really well. And it's just going to be roses and sunflowers and all of that. But that's not reality when you, you know, you're sharing space with somebody and, and your life with somebody. So I think I would try to tell someone to embrace those differences instead of trying to, you know, I think what couples try to do is, is figure out how to make him more like me and how to make her more like me. Um, and I think that that causes some crashes sometimes. I agree. There, there's definitely a reason why we all, always hear opposites attract. Mm -hmm. uh, there, there is a, there is a reason, and th the best thing you can do is learn to appreciate the differences. And I think after 21 years, I think we are kind of getting in the groove. We learn more <laughs> and more. <about> that. <laughs> but uh, everything, um, you know, we've got so many differences. It's just unbelievable. Sometimes we just sit and laugh, and um, we play a game. I will name something that I like, and it's opposite for her. So, it's, it's or a, a behavior or something we are opposite in many 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 ways, many ways. <laughs> but you see yeah. how they all come together and help make y'all a whole yeah yes yeah for sure yeah i so love that getting ready to get married the next one was um what was the next newlyweds 
Oh, no someone way. who is recently married. I like that finance one. I think I think that the advice you just gave could fit in both categories. But mm -hmm. do you have anything in particular for newlyweds? Well, well, I will share that when I first got married, I prepared myself mentally, thinking everything was going to change because we're married now. We're not dating, <laughs> and I think that caused me to behave a little bit differently because mm -hmm. I had some expectations about it was different now that we're married, even though we had already been dating seven years. So I think sometimes you, your mindset can, can change the way you behave without even realizing it. So wow. instead of just being comfortable in who I was and who he was and being the same people that we normally are, who are now trying to figure each other out as a married couple, I was, I think, just constantly looking for change, like, like trying to recognize it. Yeah. I, I thought, well, I'll nip it in the bud if, if you know, <laughs> I see any problems or you know but then you wind up like like looking for something that's not there you wind up causing it I think oh that, so I like that, that that was when we first got married I was like why are we fighting all the time you know why are we fighting all the time because I'm thinking we're gonna fight all the time <laughs> <laughs> now we married right that's what married couples do so you start making stuff that happened that just like just relax a little bit it's okay and for, for me when we were newlyweds I think I was really trying to figure out marriage. And my thought was she would do more for me oh. and submit to me. And I didn't truly understand what the word submit mean, uh, meant. So I was expecting her to do, you know, some things that really didn't make any sense. Um, <laughs> you know, for, for example, I'll, no. I'll say um, I like to clean a lot. I like a clean house. And uh, here we are 21 years later, I finally started realizing she's not going to cook a lot. <laughs> <laughs> but you know what? They, they don't want me to cook a lot either. They don't want to eat not what gonna I She's clean cook. a lot. <laughs> so I started embracing a lot of the things that I was expecting and uh, began to move forward. And I think it, it helped us not to fuss so much. Right. I like that. So, so the summary of that is expectations. expectations. I think you have these expectations and they come out in the way you behave. And I would say expectations and communication. Because what happens is you fail to say, this is what I was thinking was going to happen. And this yeah. is not what's going to happen. You just, you just act out of your expectation. Yeah. So those unrealistic expectations are what lead you to having all of those issues in those early years. Y'all hear that, oh, newlyweds? Yeah. Communicate oh, yeah. your expectations. <laughs> oh, yeah. That will help oh, yeah. solve a lot of issues before they arise. But, Rachel, I love that you said that it wasn't an issue until you started thinking that it would be an issue. And then That's you right. brought light to it. Sort of like when you get a car, then you start seeing that car everywhere. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You yeah, never exactly. noticed it. Yeah, and mm -hmm. I think I think that's a very solid point to make that, you know, the things that we start to think on are the things that we're going to start to see. So make sure that's that right. you have the right mindset concerning yeah. your spouse, unless yeah. you want to see the stuff you're thinking about. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. yeah. Good. That's, right. that's good. That's right. mm -hmm. Now, what advice would you give to those who have been married for 15 plus years, the more seasoned married people? Yeah. Who Good thinks boy. that, hey, I, what do I need a conference for? I've been with them for 20 plus years. I love how you all are saying that, hey, we're in this for 20 some years and we're learning this now. Or now oh, we're yeah. really right. getting it. I love that because so many times people think, hey, I can't learn nothing new. They're just going to accept me for who I am for the rest of this marriage. Yeah. yeah. So what advice do you have? I would say um, to really embrace the fact that they're really, I mean, the, the Bible, the word is, is, true that there are seasons for everything mm. and that has really guided us through the ups and downs the realization that it's not a short-term journey and it's not from one mountaintop to the next mountaintop and oh i have to go through a valley it's not even that it's embracing the fact that there are going to be times when you don't like each other very right. much and that has to be okay as long as you're working towards reconciliation and getting back to your happy place or, you, you know, your place of contentment. I think for me, being married 21 years, I think every time there's a season that's not so fun, I remind myself of that. It's just a season and, and this is part of the deal. You don't get like good all the time. So stop reacting like this sucks and I don't, I don't want this part. This is part of the journey. That's just part of it. Yeah. So. And for me, I think the thing that comes to mind 
is the, the, the need to keep the fire burning, if you will. <laughs> um, keep the excitement there. You know, it's, it's easy, you know, when you get that new car and it smells good mm -hmm. and you love smelling that new car. <laughs> if it's all dirty, you know, you don't have the same feeling. Um, sure. You really have to keep some excitement going on in your marriage. Um, go out on dates, you know, go hang out. You know, just enjoy one another. You know, I was laughing the other day. You know, our our youngest son is um, is Isaac. Isaac is seventh grade. We have successfully been in situations where every one of our kids have looked at us. You know, playing around and just having fun, and they all go, and they all go, ooh. Yeah, <laughs> that's gross. That's that gross. means you're doing something right. <laughs> it means you're doing something right. And, you know, our goal is for our kids to walk away and say, and say, you know, mom and dad, they were always happy. Yeah. You know, yeah, we had bad times, but for the most part, we're always laughing. We're having fun, you know, and, and we're keeping the fire burning. And, and that is, that's where a, a marriage of 20, 30, 40 years can go wrong. You just say, you know what? We've been married for 20 years or 30 years, 40 years. I'm tired of investing. I'm just going to go on cruise at this We're point. We're comfortable. Uh, yeah, get, you can't get comfortable. And, and the other thing I would say is that it looks different in different seasons of life. So dates for us, when our kids were little, were formal dates where we got a babysitter and we said, okay, uh -huh. we're scheduling this time. We're putting it on the calendar. Now our kids are a little bit older. So dates are like, do you want to go to the grocery store with me? Just me and you. <laughs> <laughs> we're getting ready to go up and down the house and have a good time. And that's fun. You know, that's it's something that needs to be done. But it's like <laughs> our together time. Or when our son goes to football, we walk laps around the field, which is oh. great exercise, but nobody's walking with us. You know, that's just us. That's our talking time. Yeah. So it looks different in different seasons. And I feel like we do a really good job of figuring out what is it going to look like now to make sure that we're getting that time. And I, I think sometimes people get hung up with, I don't have money for a babysitter. I don't have a babysitter. Yes. It doesn't have to look like one particular thing. Yeah. I like that. I like, because mm -hmm. what I just heard was, as long as we're spending time together, yes. to us, Absolutely. that's what a date is, setting aside that quality time. I've never Absolutely. heard anybody say a grocery store was a date. Yes, but, uh, everywhere. It's on a, go I mean, I can people. see that because I like grocery shopping, and I would love to have my husband go grocery but I don't know, because he would he'd be rushing me through the store. Yeah, so sometimes, I don't know. sometimes you get some parents and, you know, <laughs> regulating what I'm getting, but for example, he said, I have to go to Home Depot. Do you want to come? Okay, yeah. yeah, let's go. Just me and you. We're going out. Yeah, I was actually <laughs> impressed because I'm a, well, you said Home Depot. I love Lowe's. Okay, I'm a huge Lowe's fan. I shouldn't have said Home Depot. But most of the time, <laughs> she won't go with me. Uh -huh. But lately, we're in this season now. Yeah. She's she's going to Home Depot and Lowe's. I'm really impressed. Yeah. Okay, yeah. Go Give it okay, up Rachel. <laughs> Stop it. I love it. I love it. Because th this is very practical stuff. I know. I like that you just said, hey, make sure that you have that quality time. But you know what else I love? I love what you said about leaving that legacy um, mm -hmm. for your children. Allow them to see that, you know, yeah, marriage is not going to be rainbows and butterflies, but it doesn't have to be hell either. Right. <laughs> it can yeah. be, you know, you're going to go through those seasons and you're going to enjoy the moments and then there are going to be so, some not so enjoyable moments, but even through it all, we, you see mom and dad stuck through it all and we enjoyed each other. We had a good time through it all. Right. Yeah. And I yeah. think sometimes parents forget that um, your kids are watching you and oh, what yeah. type of legacy of marriage are you going to leave imprinted in their mind? So I love that you said that yeah. um, because we do, we, we look to our parents, right? our yeah. role model. So I love that. I love that. So we mm -hmm. have quite a bit of audience on here tonight. Mm -hmm. Does anyone have a couple of questions? We're not going to, you're not going to get to ask them everything because then you won't need to buy tickets for the <laughs> conference. So we'll accept maybe one or two questions. If you have anything you would like to ask the Copelands before we log off. Anybody out there? I'll give you a couple of seconds to type it in. I have really enjoyed this conversation. I'm going to ask my husband, do he want to go on a date with me to the mall? <laughs> to the mall. And yes, to the mall. His credit card. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Think that would be a good idea? Right. 
Uh-huh. Oh, <laughs> Do we have any questions for the Copelands? Once again, this is Rachel and Reggie Copeland. They are going to be speakers at the marriage conference. They've been married for 21 years, been together for 28 years. I think that is such a blessing. So Jessica says, one year of marriage in October, any advice? They gave some newlywed advice at the beginning, but do you have any specific advice that you want to give Jessica? One year of marriage in October. Jessica, my friend. Um, <laughs> one year of advice. Uh, I mean, one year of marriage. So, so, I, so I have one. One of the things we did in, in one of our seasons, we put a jar on the dresser in our bedroom. Mm -hmm. And... And I, and I took some paper and I wrote five to 10 things that I wanted to do. And I asked her to do the same thing. Or and want it done for you, like things that you like. Yeah, things that I like. Yeah. Okay. Exactly. So, so once or twice a month, we took turns pulling out something in that jar that I wanted to do or she wanted to do mm -hmm. to make sure we continue dating and having fun and getting to know one another. Mm -hmm. oh, and it wasn't one sided and then you didn't have to wait for you did, there was no indecisiveness you just drew one out and you went. Right. You gotta do whatever you draw <laughs> that's what you gotta do that's what you gotta do I love mm -hmm. it mm -hmm. so Eric Elliott said how do you edify each other that's you a know, good one Eric that's a great question because when we were young married uh, we did not do a good job about this yeah. because we were both very immature sometimes people can be in well, their young immature. 20 Oh, okay. No, I was in the <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> so clearly, one of us is mature. You know? <laughs> anyway, I look back on this and I, I realized how in, in social settings, we would kind of take jabs at each other, kind of uh -huh. in play, you know, in jest, but we definitely were not edifying each other publicly in front of our friends. Like, you know, friends at church would go out to lunch, you know, after service. And we would kind of start playfully attacking each other for our faults or weaknesses. And, and So immature. So immature. And then after some time, we're like, you know, that actually should never happen. If I think yeah. I have a complaint about you, you know, even if I'm um, saying it lighthearted and trying to be funny about it, that should never come across at the lunch table in front of, you know, 10 of our friends that's inappropriate. That's, that's the opposite of edifying my husband. Yeah. I should communicate to him that really this bothers me or, or whatever. Um, like so that, that was something that we did. That was a mistake. I would say that we both met that we both did when we were young. And I think the problem is it's sort of like a cycle. When you identify something, you say something, that person is going to respond. They're going to say something back and be like, well, you always do blah, 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 you know, and that is a cycle that's hard to break. So yeah. we kind of made a decision. You know what? We're going to stop talking bad about each other. Not like that. Yeah. Um, so, so I think that kind of started the ball rolling up publicly. We're never going to say something that's bad about the other person. And, you know, that carries over into our conversations about the other person with people outside of just us, family members or friends or whatever. And we, and we did reach a level where we both realized if we build one another up, the only thing that's going to happen is going to build our marriage up. I love yeah. it. I yeah. love it. I yep. love it. When you're building each other up, you're building your marriage up. I love it. Absolutely. You can go to Lowe's and get some wood and write that on there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I love yeah. that. I love yeah. that. Um, there was one more question, and this will be the last question for the for tonight. I don't remember who asked it, but the question was, how do you get through the bad season? or the rough seasons or something. It was something to that extent. How do you get through okay. the bad times? So you will always have bad seasons. I will say the key is for us to have Christ in the center of our marriage. And mm -hmm. by having Christ in the center of our marriage, we both were aiming, you know, and looking to him when we're going through these tough times and it. just believing that, you know, like what Rachel said, it's a season and there is a season for everything. And, and we, we, we realize that as we go through these bad seasons, they're just preparing us for something even greater. So the, the rough seasons, boy, we've, we've seen some, some rough seasons. Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. 
Absolutely. We've been through a lot of things in, in 28 years. Uh, I would add to that to say that um, there is a truth that I hold on to that, um, you know, you they say don't go to sleep angry. Yes. I'm, I'm not telling anybody that they should do the opposite of that, but but I think giving each other a little bit of space to feel whatever it is you're feeling is important. Mm -hmm. So if he's mad, okay, you can be mad. You, that's okay. <laughs> you're not going to stay mad forever. And yes. If I'm mad or I'm upset, I feel like that we give each other, we try to give each other space or grace is really the way I think about it. Try to give each other grace to go ahead, feel that emotion, be mad. And, and eventually you're going to get over it and we're going to be right back. We're going to bounce right back to our, our norm, which is, you know, pretty closely connected and, uh, and that kind of thing. But I think that's one thing that works for us that, you know, at the end of the day, if one of us is upset with the other one, I don't think that either of us feels pressure to say this, this has to be resolved immediately. Sometimes things take a little time to work that's through. And that to me, that comes across as grace. Um, just, you know, I like that. respecting each other's time and space and processing time. You, you're not always going to get over something quickly. So that's yeah. what I think. And then rushing somebody else, she's like, come on, hurry up and heal. Hurry up and get over it. And then yes. you seem insensitive when you're rushing someone yes. to or, not feel a certain and way. And I think couple, couples do that. They want to, one of them wants to talk. Like, we're going to talk about this right now. Yes. That might not always be the best thing. Sometimes you, you do have to offer people a little bit of space with the understanding of when you're ready, we're going to revisit this. We're going to talk about it, but it doesn't have to be right now. But, but you know, obviously we're not going to just ignore it. We're going to come back to it. Which is another one of those areas that we've worked on because she wants it. to she wants to just sit back and let's sit on it. I'm I'm more of this, you know, my my thing is let's discuss this now. Let's bring it to the table. Let's close this deal right now. Close the but deal. But no, nah, she's not like that. So, need a little more yeah, time. So I've learned to wait. Mm -hmm. I like that because, you know, well, I can't say all men because I don't like to generalize, but a lot of the men that I know, they are problem solvers. And so when they right. see the problem, exactly. they're like, come on, let's fix this. You That's know? right. They're they're like, I don't know. Let me That's feel true. how I'm going to feel, you know? <laughs> yeah, exactly. exactly. But, so, yeah. but there are issues that sometimes you just need to go ahead and resolve. And then there are other ones where you, you do not need to let people feel what yeah. they're feeling. I love it. Well, yeah. just to close out, Frank did ask, is there any scripture that you, that you have to hold each other accountable? Like, is there a, a scripture that you both go to in which you say, hey, this is what we said we're going to believe or do. Is there any scripture that you would, that you have used? I, I don't know that we have one that we have necessarily adopted as our scripture that we use, but probably my favorite scripture in the Bible is Romans 8, 12, where it's, as far as it depends on me, only. live at peace with everyone. And I try to be that way with everybody. Yes. And I try to offer grace to everybody. And in our marriage, I think that's where that comes out that I say, you, you have a right to be upset and to feel what you feel, and I'm going to let you do that even if I disagree. So I try to live my life that way by that scripture. That scripture That's a good one. a lot that, you know, just as far as I have control over me, I'm going to try to make sure I'm, I'm letting people feel what they need to feel and, and do what they need to do, and I'm creating peace. Um, as much as I can. I don't, do you have and, a... and for me, and it really goes back to an earlier question, someone asked, how do we get through the rough times? For me, yes. Proverbs 3, 5, and 6, trust in the Lord with all your heart, lean not to your own understanding, and in all your ways acknowledge him, and he will make your path straight. When you broke, he's going to make it straight. When you're struggling <laughs> in your marriage, mm -hmm. he's yes. going to make it straight. When you got job problems, he's going to make it straight. And And for me, that is the scripture that I hold near and dear. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I love it. I love it. So we're not going to give y'all any more. If you <laughs> want to hear more from the Copelands, then you need to register for the Love Heart of Mary right. Conference That's happening right. October 13th. You can register at, can, Deborah Netta, can you type this in for me? Loveharder.yapsity.com. <laughs> Thank you so Thank much. Thank you for Reg having you. us. Rachel. We are very, Thank very, very, very excited. I'm even more excited now because I, I, I love this quality, but very tangible advice that you're sharing with people. I'm glad you're not going over the head like they're trying to yeah. 
get a dictionary to understand what you're saying. <laughs> <laughs> I'm glad it is yeah. very practical. And mm -hmm. I look forward to hearing more wisdom come from you on Thank October you. 13th at the conference. Come to the conference. That's right. We're excited. Thank you all. Yep. You have a Thanks wonderful more. night. You too. Thank you. Good, All right. night. Good night.